Hi, welcome to our bus. I'm Corbin. I'm Yeti. And this is Miss Lana. All right, so welcome to the bus. We're going to start with our kitchen. So with the tiles and everything, we really just wanted to make this as much personality and color and everything as possible. Um, that's kind of just who we are as people. So we found our backsplash penny tiles at Floor and Decor. They've got like a whole color collection. So with the counters, we just went for a plywood. We wanted to keep everything as light and minimal as possible. And we really liked the, like the look of the edge of the plywood. So we sanded, stained, um, we used a tongue oil and a water, water lock seal. Um, and it's been working super well so far. So we decided to go with induction because we wanted to just avoid propane at all costs if we could. So the induction stove is nice. I, I like how it works. It's, there's a little bit of a downside to it when we're cooking with both burners because you can only turn like them on to a maximum of combined temperature. So um, a little inconvenient, but I think just that this peace of mind with not having propane, we, we like. Um, we actually didn't install it permanently so we can like lift it out for cleaning. Um, that's super convenient. So with the sink, we found this on offer up for like $40. Um, and it's worked super nice. We love how big it is. And actually when we're driving, we'll take a lot of these jars and stuff from up top and fit pretty much everything just in here. And it's no worries when things are shaking and moving. We have a decent amount of storage with the shelves and everything down here. It's pretty small. Um, we actually bought our cabinets just from Ikea because it was already pre-built and easy. And yeah, I wish we would have drawers, but we've made it work. We have plenty of storage. We also have storage under the couch. Um, we've got these pullouts in here that are super help super helpful with managing space. So we went with a smaller fridge just so that it would fit under the sink with our countertop and everything. Um, so it has a decent amount of space on the door and the freezer is actually bigger than most other dorm fridges that we found. Um, we got a pretty good deal on it. So it's been pretty good so far. And we consumption, power consumption should could definitely be a bit better. Um, however, once we switch our batteries to lithium, I don't think we'll have any problems. Um, the only thing with AGM, they'll drain to 50% pretty quick. Like if we're, you know, running coffee machine, hot water at the same time. But for the most part, we're totally fine, especially when we're plugged in. All right, so one of our favorite parts about our kitchen, like I said, we cook a lot, so it was important to us to have a lot of spices. And so we actually built our spice rack into the wall and set, so it actually t makes use of that space. And then on the other side in the bathroom, we also have the shelf. So we're taking full advantage of the inside of our wall. We call our couch our Tetris couch because we made it, like, everybody does the pullouts, but we wanted to do it in three different sections so that we had the multifunctionality of having it L-shaped or U-shaped, which we never do, um, it folds out to a full-size bed. So we have our full-size bed in the back and this one for guests. And we have plenty of storage underneath the couch. In here, this one's actually a drawer that pulls out, but then we have all of our kitchen staples underneath here and just different storage organizers. So that's super effective storage space. So we have the privilege of working remotely and being able to do that. It's super convenient when living in a bus. Um, so we really wanted to make sure we had enough workspace for both of us. So this is my desk. Um, we made it so that we could also use it for kitchen space, but really it's just used as my desk most of the time. All right, so then moving on to the front, we have a super awesome shoe shelf that Yeni made. It we wanted it to fit perfectly to this space. Um, so it's shaped totally different than most people's. So with our steps and our entryway, again, we wanted to use as much like recycled material, be sustainable as we could. We found really cool cork. It's actually underlayment for like when people lay flooring, but it's made of cork and recycled rubber. Um, we weren't sure that it would be durable enough. So we 
put, I think, three, four coats of like a epoxy concrete seal meant for garage floors. So with our shelf up front, um, we, we wanted to keep it open. Um, we were going to close in extra storage here and here. But like I said, with the kitchen, like when you when you have extra, just throw shit into storage. Um, it doesn't usually look very nice. So we decided to keep it open. Um, right now we're stationary, so it's fine that it's all put out like this. We're not moving all the time, but when we do move, we kind of just pack in the books and they're tight enough that they don't budge. So this is my favorite part of the bus, I think. Um, so our poster we got in Budapest. It was made on a vintage letterpress. And so we've, you know, we're nomadic, we travel around, we haven't really had a place to put it. So when we were thinking of the design of our, this is a mini bar slash table slash desk, um, we actually made sure that this was custom built to frame our poster. <laughs> so this folds down super easy. Again, Yenny built this, she's like a master carpenter. Um, so before we built my table, actually I worked here a lot. It's super nice that we can both work at the same time or if we're working on this, a project together. Um, most of the time we just use it as a table for eating. Super easy to fold up and down and it's also great for partying and drinking and storage and all the fun things. The way we ended up building the bus is Pre-pandemic, pre we got married in November 2019 um, in Thailand, like I said before. Um, we flew out of Thailand March 2nd, 2020 um, to visit her family in Denmark for a bit with the intention of moving to Prague. And we'd been talking for a while about potentially doing the schoolie thing after Prague and saving up some money for a bit to do that. Um, then COVID happened, we ended up in Denmark for a while, trying to just figure out what we were going to do. Finally decided Prague was not going to happen and then kind of ended up here. We're like, all right, let's just do this fully thing. And Yeah, we were in Denmark for five months and the borders didn't open, so we didn't really have a choice. We had to go back to America because Cor Corbin's visa was out, so she had to leave. So we only had one choice at that time. So we bought the bus in September 2020, started her green card process in October, and have been building for about a year, and then got her green card just as we were wrapping up the build. And you know, people keep asking us like, well, so we're about to fly to Bali um, here in about a month, um, not traveling in the bus right away. And everybody keeps asking us like, well, what about the bus, what about the bus? It's like. It wasn't our original plan and now we're so happy we have it and it will be here when we get back and we can't wait to travel in it in the, in the States. Yeah, it's, it's nice not having the mortgage when you're when we're traveling so much as we do and it's it's nice that we have a home base when we're then are here because we are keep coming back like Corbin's family is from here so and we have a lot of friends here so we are coming back a lot um, so it's nice to have our own home anytime we're back here. This is also part of my office. Like I said, like Corbin got the short end of the sticks. You have this small office over here and I have this office. So for us, it's super important that we have this space to actually work. And that's why we have a monitor and I have my computer because we work on our computers probably like eight to 16 hours a day, depending on what jobs we have in. So it's important, it's comfortable somewhere like Especially, I can't sit on a tall chair. It's not comfortable for me, but for Corbin, it's fine. For me, I need a real office chair, something that's just comfy. So we chose to not have a TV in our home because I don't think we have owned a TV. Like I haven't had a TV for at least 10 years. So for us, having a monitor where we can stream for either like our computers or our phone and just hook it up, this is a very multifunctional um, piece if you would call it that so basically this monitor helps me to be more productive because we do like I do websites we do do like 
different kind of like business development stuff and video and photos and all of these things. And sometimes just having one screen is a, it's too much like getting back and forth. So we're using the screen for mostly work, but then we in the, in the evenings we use it to watch some TV. So basically the screen is just on a swing arm and we can watch from the living area. I can use it as a screen wherever I want the screen in front here or from the bedroom area. So it's it's very easy. So when we positioned this, it was based on all areas throughout the bus. So we can basically watch yeah, from wherever. So the skylight, we utilized the old emergency exit, but we, we made the hole a bit bigger and we created like basically a box and it opens up and we used like, I don't know like how thick the plexiglass is, but pretty thick. Um, what we just learned is like after it being used for a while, it kind of gets like this kind of cloudiness on and you can't just wash it down. But I just found out that you can actually sand it with like a very, very fine grid and it will become like glass again. So right now you can't really see out of it. But again, it's learning as we're going and I'm sure we can make it look nice again. But the light that comes in is super like it's amazing. But we do live in Arizona and it gets very hot. So we created a small curtain that goes up where we can put like um, reflectics underneath. So it, it doesn't like, you know, burn you in here. But you can actually see how harsh the sun is. It makes small burn marks inside because the sun is like reflecting in. So it's, it's nice with the light, but it also le uh, lets in more heat. So depending where you're at, maybe you don't want the skylight, but we love it. And just in front of that, and that's more like for the aesthetics, we try to just keep it together. And also on the, on the deck, like on the top of the bus, we have like solar panels in the front and then the back is going to be like a rooftop deck at some point. But the max air fan we have, we have the one that both takes air in and out. And we chose to go with one because it's not a 40 foot bus. This is like 26 foot, so it's not that big. And it works like magic. Like you open, you crank a small window in one end and it pulls the air. You can open two windows. Like personally, I would not need two, like never. So I would say that's just an extra expense on $700 you don't need. When we first started this whole journey, we actually knew nothing about nothing. Like we, we started from scratch, probably like everyone else is doing. So we got bummed up with this nature's head toilet for a thousand dollars. And I literally said, I'm not going to poop in something I paid thousand dollars for. So we, we went the DIY route and we went on Etsy and we bought like a 3D printed um, with like P urine divider, P jerk thing, where it's meant to be installed on a five gallon bucket. We quickly upgraded that because yes, it worked. But for two people living in it full time, yeah, not as well. So we actually did a massive upgrade. So the first we had like a like a separate tank for the pee, but two gallon fills up really quick when you're two people. So we actually funnels out the pee through the bottom of the bus into a seven gallon tank that can easily be emptied from the outside because that's literally the smelly part and we don't want to carry it through the bus. It's just too gross. And then we upgraded the the bucket part into one of the big black storage bin with the yellow lids. So we can actually, when you have to clean it out, you can put the yellow lid on and carry it out and empty it wherever you want to empty it. So it works very well now. And it's, so yeah, we did a lot of small like adjustments and stuff, but it took us a year to find all the small kinks. On this side, it's totally like bedroom waterproof, basically everything in here. So as Corbin mentioned earlier, we have like the inset in this wall down here for all our shampoos and stuff. So the whole wall is utilized. So there's no like wasted space with putting a wall in. So having a shower in the bus was a must have for us. Like we don't want to have to go somewhere else to take showers because we mostly want to be parked off grid. Um, that's why we built this bus. So I actually find this shower very convenient. Like it's sometimes if you're not totally leveled, you have to get the water into the drain, but it's just a small thing. It's like either have a shower or no shower. And yes, it, it's it's small, but you get used to it. It's a bus. It's just to be in a, in a rig. So you have a shower. It's amazing. 
We chose to actually put a small window in because it's a very dark room. We have no windows in the in the bathroom. We have like one light and it it works pretty well. It lights up what you need to see. You don't need to see much in the bathroom anyways. But this just lets in some daylight. So we already had a lot of that mindset of just kind of, we can figure out anything and plans change all the time and we figure it out and we do it. So when it came to building the bus, you know, we didn't know anything. We had to learn for ourselves, teach ourselves. Most stuff, we're just kind of like, yeah, this is fine, we'll figure it out. When it came to electrical and plumbing, that was probably the biggest learning experience. I'd say for me, probably you, I don't know. Yeah. Um, because it's like, we don't know anything and this is kind of dangerous stuff. Well, with electrical anyways but um, like with everything else we're just kind of winging it like it's if you can't be too nervous about trying something new and you can't say you can't figure it out until you at least have tried and maybe even tried 10 times it's and there like, were like so many times through the build where things were super overwhelming we were just kind of like at our breaking point where you know you kind of just take a step back reset and then put your mind to it again and with the electrical actually once we figured it out, it was like really fun. I really enjoyed it mm -hmm. because it's like, yeah, I got this. And then, yeah, so it's very empowering. We live very minimalistic. We used to, we always travel. So we basically, we can fit everything into two suitcases. So these two drawers is really deep and goes underneath the bed, I think they're two feet deep and we have a drawer each and it pulls out and we have most of our clothing we have like the seasonal clothing we, if, like winter clothes we put away when it's summer and we just change it out in here we chose to go with a full-size bed instead of a queen to actually create a bit of extra storage so we have in here these one will be put on with magnets so they're not going anywhere when we're driving it's just a small detail we haven't got done yet but in here we made a custom made um laundry bag that literally just goes on velcro so when you go to the laundromat you just take this one out take it in to the laundromat and we have extra storage underneath this one so this one caps off here that has more storage and in this corner there's gonna be a, a diesel heater coming out to blow air in so that's there's already space for that down there this middle part we have like power outlets in these places because we don't want to have like visible cords laying around so it's easy when we go to bed if you want to plug your phone in or whatever um, you just move this a little bit and then you have the cord coming out so in our bedroom we have extra storage on top of our garage area because the garage as you can see later on is that there's a lot of space, so there there would have been a lot of unused space, so we cut it off and we have like free storage uh, bins up here and it really helps with a bit of extra storage. And then we have Corbin's little bed shelving system in the wall. So that's actually a wall in the garage where a lot of our electric stuff is mounted onto. And she also have like a power plug down there, so we have one on each side. And it's good for having a few books, a little drink, all of these things so it's kind of like having a side like bedside table all right so we decided to use the door where the wheelchair lift was for our garage space just so that we could have all of our plumbing electrical everything assembled in one space that was easy to like get to and work on rather than being like under a bench somewhere um so our plumbing we've got a hundred gallon water tank under the bed like yanni explained and then we have SureFlow water pump and a SureFlow accumulator that helps regulate the water pressure. And we also have it hooked up so that we can run from city water if we want to, and then it will bypass the pump. Everything's going through this filter here. And then we've got our four gallon um, hot water heater from Bosch. Um, we like it so far. Um, the surge power is kind of high, so it's good if you have like a sufficient amount of battery power, but heats really well. We both take showers. 
one after the other and don't ever run out of hot water. So it's super awesome. And we don't even have it turned up all the way. Um, we ran our plumbing pipes with valves so we can shut off to the kitchen. And then we put in a, a little hose tap here in case we need to use that to just use our own water to hose anything down, fill anything up. So we got all of our battery stuff for solar from Renogy. Um, we really like them so far. We definitely want to upgrade our AGM batteries to lithium at some point because it'll just give us a lot more capability electrically. So we've got four panels up top from Santan Solar. They're about 1,240 watts. Comes down, we have a 100 amp MPPT charge controller that just helps kind of regulate what's coming in. Um, and then by far the best purchase we made with our electrical was buying this Lynx distributor from Victron. The electrical was super, super overwhelming. We have zero experience. Um, it, it probably took us like six months to really finally get to the point where we're like, oh, you know what? We know how to do this. We're just going to put our head to it and do it and not be afraid of the electricity. Once you understand like where the power comes from, where it goes, it's, it's really easy to just put it together. The great thing about the Lynx distributor is that it has, rather than having like a bus bar for all of your fuses, it's just, it assembles everything all in one place. So it's super organized. It's really easy, especially for people like us who know nothing about electrical to be like, all right, this is your charge controller. This is your batteries. And it's all divided and organized in one spot. You know, we didn't know anything going into this, but I see a lot of other women on Facebook or whatever kind of just say, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. And it's very overwhelming, especially single or, you know, in a relationship, like we had to learn everything, but just the amount of skills that we've developed through this process, like it was not easy, but we, it's super empowering to just put your mind to something and figure it out and make it your own. And I think the end goal of like having the freedom to travel like we love to do, but also to be settled in a way, wherever we want to be, um, I think it's worth it in the end, like all the hard stuff. Cause I mean, it's not easy. There were blood, sweat, and tears put into this. I think, uh, yeah, I definitely think it's important to also just kind of like close your ears for like your surroundings. They Because I, I feel like a lot of people like, oh, you're going to build a bus or like, are you sure you can do it? All of these like things and I think it, it just like lures in your head and like not doing it. Screw them. Just prove them wrong. Like seriously, just, just do it. Like if you think you can do it, you can do it and you just need to do it. Um, yes, it can be scary to make decisions, but that's like any decisions in life and you, you would regret it if you don't do it. I think it's just a different lifestyle. Most people, most people look at this and think it's crazy or, or like something that they've always dreamed of doing, but it's like anybody can do it. Like we're just your average person really. Yeah, so thanks for checking out our bus with us. It's been fun. And um, if you want to go ahead and follow us, you know, it's not always bus stuff. Usually it's travel or a mix of everything. But our Instagram is at Annie and Corbin. The links will be in below. Um, we've also got our own personal website blog when I decide that I like writing those. And our um, we have our own um, LGBTQ clothing brand that we made that's it's perfectly clear also links below